Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Chris and this is Regular Guy Training. So we have ourselves kind of a rarity on this channel and that's a complete AR for once. I know, it's fucking weird. Um, the rifle that we have today, you read the title, is from Colt. Right, this is their Colt M4A1, not a 6920 or whatever. Right, but it is in fact marked the M4A1. Now you can see the upper receiver is marked with a big old C for Colt. You can check out the lower and that is marked as as an M4A1 carbine, right? And the difference between this and and uh, other models that they have, like the 6920 and that kind of deal, is that this is very much like the M4A1 that's replacing uh, all the M4s in our inventories. In that, um, whether or not the the civilian line of rifles um, replaced extractor springs and also inserted o-rings and that kind of thing this comes with that stock there's also a m4 uh, socom profile barrel in it uh, which is now just the m4a1 profile barrel uh, so a little bit of a difference between that and the 6920 because 6920 has a standard government quote-unquote profile barrel up front and I'm not sure if they kept kept up with the improved extractor spring in their bolts as well as the O-ring because uh, I, I have not fucked around with the 6920 uh, hardly ever since like, like 2012 maybe. And I wasn't even around one of those for very long. Um, I ended up selling the one that I owned. But that's not the point. The point is, is this is available for, com for commercial purchase and that kind of deal. Now... There are some things that come with this that come with this stock that are present in this video and a whole bunch of shit that's not. So uh, before we get into that, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of the history behind this rifle before um, you know we talk about everything else. It's going to be a little bit backwards from what I normally do because we'll talk about feature set and all that stuff after history, reliability, and that kind of deal. So this is a loaner rifle from my buddy Zach. He works at Buds. He picked this up from their used shelf uh, because he saw that it came with pretty much everything that you see here, minus a couple of added on doodads and that kind of thing. Um, like, that's mine, the light on here is mine. Um, you know, and the charging handle didn't come with it as well. Uh, that there's a Raptor here instead of the BCM that came with it. Uh, and again, it was a used gun, so it was a bunch of stuff that wasn't, that it didn't, that is non, that is aftermarket rather. So. Uh, he saw that it had barely been shot. I saw that it had barely been shot because he's like, hey, look at this shit. Um, I happened to be present while he was cracking it open to get a look at it. And from there, he just kind of made a decision. He decided he was going to go ahead and, and get it. Uh, after he fired roughly a thousand rounds through it, he decided that he was going to turn it loose to me for a review. I've had it for a little over six months at this point. And between him firing uh, a thousand rounds through it, uh, me firing roughly 1,500 rounds through through it as far as uh, demos and that kind of thing because the average for me is around about 500 rounds, a uh, little plus or minus depending on you know the group I have or or if it's rifle two class and we start to do a little bit of the uh, the uh, the work in pairs kind of drills and we have a lopsided class for instance so I'll be the I'll be the the, the guy that makes it even and I'll have a couple of ROs keep an eye on things. Uh, t uh, so between three different occasions where I brought it in as an instructor rifle, roughly 500 rounds a piece, so that's 1,500. Uh, 2,500 rounds fired uh, just as individual drills because I've been working on the right-handed sauce pretty hard. Uh, you guys saw all the shoot footage for this. Um, that was, you know, just me working more right-handed stuff. Uh, what you saw was the last 300 rounds that needed to be fired through it uh, to make it an even 2,500 fired, just as in like just in private practice, that kind of thing. Uh, a thousand rounds fired through it because I had a guy from California come out with an 80% rifle, and that was making us really nervous. So very shortly, so very shortly after he showed up for the performance rifle class, uh, I mean like maybe a couple hundred rounds at the most, we decided to hand him this and be like complete complete the course with this. Uh, so he shot roughly a thousand rounds through it, and another guy that um, what you call it that didn't have a rifle but wanted to take one of our courses. I told him that I'd hook him up, so he shot. Uh, he he took rifle one and two, so lowballing it there. 
roughly 2,200 rounds ish. So doing all that math in there, we're a shade under 2,000 or um, correction, 8,000 rounds fired through this gun in roughly six months. That's a lot between a lot of different hands, but that's the history that's on this rifle as far as number of rounds fired, sets of hands that have been on it, that kind of deal. <coughs> Also, my buddy Josh shot this a little bit, but I've come but between when he shot it and now I've completely forgotten how many rounds he's fired through it, so I'm not even gonna count those. He went to like a class, he went to like a one day class with it. So even still, it couldn't have been like crazy, maybe 500 rounds. But again, I don't know exactly, so I'm not gonna count it. So a shade under 8,000 that I know for a fact went through this gun, and it's kind of a low ball. Um, also, what we're looking at here. Uh, as far as reliability, it's been superb, um, and that's really pretty standard. Uh, it's it's got all of the stuff that you would expect out of a mil spec rifle. You know, high high pressure magnetic particle inspected bolt, um, proper bolt and carrier steel grade, proper aluminum. Uh, the proper numbers that you're going to look for as far as quality of aluminum for both receivers, uh, cold hammer forged barrel one and seven twist, freaking. Uh, chrome lined. Uh, this is also a carbine length gun. Uh, again, with its SOCOM profile barrel in it. We'll talk more about that here in a second. And it's just chugged away, man. It's 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 done exactly what it's supposed to do, um, over and over and over again. Oh yeah, like H buffer and that kind of shit too. So uh, everything proper that's supposed to be in a solid rifle is in this rifle. Um, now, things that are non-standard to this gun that got added to it. Um, some of it, uh, at first I didn't really like, but I got used to over time and helped out with certain things. Like, apparently the guy that had picked this rifle up had decided he was going to try and make a block too that's fairly obvious. Um, because it comes with a, a standard set of hand guards rather than, uh, rather than a freaking what you call it, uh, freaking wrist that's up here from Danny Defense. So... Obviously, that's, that's uh, aftermarket part. You also have the, the Raptor that's in here, the grip that's in here, that kind of thing. Uh, and, of course, the B5 stock that's in here. What you're going to end up getting with a standard rifle is the freaking uh, standard ass M4 stock with the GI grip on it. The ambi safety is stock. You're going to end up with a GI charging handle, um, a military-esque backup rear, which sucks. Uh, no optics, a standard uh, handguard up front, all that. So, as well as a barrel profile that that's it, that it's got on a birdcage flash suppressor, that kind of deal. Now, at first, with all the doodads that you see here, I didn't really like it as much. It was it's obviously pretty nose heavy for a rifle of its type, and yeah, it's stout, it's real heavy. But as you guys see, the extra weight up front makes it really, really nice to shoot quickly because. It just doesn't really move around. There's so much fucking weight up front that it doesn't move around at all. Now, of course, carrying it around for a long time makes it pretty annoying, uh, especially if you have to add additional doodads like a Pec-15 and that kind of deal up front. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, but you can absolutely see why the wrist was a thing. You've got, a, you've got extended coverage and that kind of deal. Um, you can get a pretty good extension with your hands. You know, So, no big deal. It it as as far as a rifle that I just kind that was just kind of handed to me, and I was and I was asked to go run. It runs really well. Now, as far as reliability and stuff, I've had one issue with it, and I'm not going to call it the rifle's fault because I had a single split case. Um, you know, and I'm going to chalk that up to you know ammo related stuff. It was a Tula uh, rifle round that spl that uh, started to split, uh, so that required a freaking cleaning rod to get out and that's and you know you just kind of tap it very lightly so that you don't rip the uh, the ass end of the case all the way off as you're trying to pull it out and then add bigger problems but it came out we got it back we got it rolling again and it just has kept going ever since now all of this being said um, pretty standard as far as accuracy and that kind of stuff about a minute and a half gun uh, uh, I've only shot this out to 300. I haven't shot it further than that, but it holds true all the way out there. The the heavier profile barrel up front, very uh, 
uh, it, it handles heat very, very well. It takes a little bit longer to get those groups to open up once you start to shoot extended groups out of it and that kind of deal. Because uh, part of it is like a 15 shot group out of it to see if it starts to open up. Um, so it, it takes a little while to open those groups up. I think the last time that um, I'd shot a group like that out of it just to test its accuracy. It took around 12, it took around 18 plus rounds for it to start to open up all the way. And of course it's not super fast, but I'm not sitting there waiting a minute and a half before each shot either. So as far as reliability and that kind of stuff, it's just worked great. Um, let's talk about a couple other things here before we kind of wrap up the review because there ain't much really to talk about on a rifle that everyone pretty much knows is going to run really well. Now, something I didn't really expect um, that I figured would be the exact opposite is how the rifle's gassed. Now, typically speaking, um, when I'm shooting stuff that has like mil spec qualities to a quote unquote, especially a lot of big name manufacturers, um, the first one that comes to mind is Daniel Defense. Um, I'm expecting this rifle to be very much like that, where I'm expecting this rifle to be very much like Daniel Defense, where it's over gassed because they're because they're notorious for overgassing their guns so because they want their shit to cycle <coughs> wherever and with whatever. But uh, this didn't seem to uh, do that, right? Now, generally speaking, with like MA55 and that kind of stuff on like a Dana Defense rifle, I'm expecting, you know, uh, two, one, 132 o'clock uh, ejection, actually mostly one o'clock, where the ejection pattern out of like MA55 is that way. Um, with 5.56 rated or pressured ammunition, I'm mostly getting 3 o'clock, uh, which is actually fairly surprising. And then when you have like powdered down stuff like Wolf and that kind of shit, um, you're getting very much what you would expect out of the lower powered ammo and that kind of stuff where it's fanning it out that way, where uh, if I didn't have a brass deflector and if I was shooting it left-handed, uh, I would have wished that I did. You know, so... It's something that I didn't quite expect out of this rifle, but I thought was actually a pretty nice touch. It makes everything uh, cycle a bit smoother as far as how hard uh, the system is on the parts. Of course, if it's properly gassed, it's going to be less harsh on the parts, so it might be something that you're into um, as far as you know whether or not you're going to check the box or, un or not check the box if you want to pick one up. Um, but realistically speaking, that's all I have. I mean, Colt ha has had to have been the standard for a long time because they've been issuing uh, rifles to our guys for the longest. Uh, this shot pretty well as far as accuracy is, gonna, is concerned. Uh, it's been fat check reliable. Uh, it's done nothing but do its job since it got you know to our little neck of the woods. And I can't fault them for, for turning out a good product. So, if you're into it, you're into it. A lot of guys are getting into different rifles and that kind of stuff, especially a lot of guys that are just kind of turning away from the carbine length stuff, which I understand. Um, but it may be worth it to you to pick a carbine length gun up at some point or another, because what I did notice is that during our rifle courses and that kind of stuff, oh yeah, as far as reliability and that kind of, and that kind of stuff is concerned, you can see behind me, uh, that can get really muddy out here in, uh, in the Tennessee area or in the, I'm right on the uh, northern central border between Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, so, you know, they both kind of count as the same area. But point is, is that during our fall and winter, it's just wet all the time. Um, every once in a while, you'd run into issues where just caked mud on magazines would start making their way back into the guns. And, you know, I believe it stopped a couple of times or had a couple of hiccups that way. Um, but then again, everybody was, so I don't really count that as against the rifle itself. It's just in really, really, really shit conditions. But even still, um, guys that were running it, or even myself, didn't have many problems out of it whatsoever because it is, in fact, a carbine length gun. And while it's harder on the parts in the moment, um, and especially long term, it's also, in my, in my eyes, a little more reliable as far as getting the bullshit out of there and just doing its job and cycling um, in that moment as well. So, you know, might not be something that you want to thumb your nose on instantly. But then again, it's your choice, not mine. I say it's a solid rifle. Um, it's been shot enough around us to really warrant a you know, solid thumbs up from the rest of us. 
uh, as far as like finish wear and that kind of thing. I would have showed you guys this, but dude, uh, I was honestly kind of unprepared. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of friggin' lube and that kind of stuff. I don't have cleaning materials here, so unfortunately it is what it is. But enough students that have taken classes with us have seen it on ranges, have seen it shot, that kind of shit. And at this point, you guys know that I shoot the shit out of my guns. Um, as well as the fact that I'm handing a lot of rifles to students now. We broke enough equipment on the range. I'm pretty sure that you guys are, are going to let me slide on this one. But it is what it is. So that's all I really got. It's been, it's been a solid piece, and I can't really say much more on it. So if you guys want to come out and train with us, we have a bunch of classes set from here through September. Um, if you want to jump on that train, go ahead. Freaking, we got tons of stuff open and ready to go. Uh, we have a couple of classes that are pretty close to being sold out and that kind of deal. Like our Pistol 1 class in Paisley, Florida uh, has like a slot left and Pistol 2 has three, I believe. So not many left on that. And it's the same story for a bunch of other classes too. Like we're going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I believe that has a slot or two maybe left at the most. So, you know, go ahead and look at what you can, you know, what it is that you want to see. We're also going to Drakesboro, uh, Kentucky and uh, Whitefish, Montana. We're going there for Pistol 1 and 2, so a bunch of stuff that's open. You can look it up and check it out. Um, if you want to train with us for a pretty good price, you can hop on the, tra the Patreon bandwagon. Uh, link for both of these, by the way, is in, this in the description below. And either you can toss a couple of uh, dollars at us because we do train up soldiers with a lot with a bunch of that money. Like I'm taking two guys to the Louisiana Rifle 1 and 2 classes, which still have slots in them also, by the way. Um, uh, I'm taking two soldiers to that um, and you guys have helped in an immense way with that kind of stuff, what, either through the Patreon thing or just throwing ammo at us, and that's really generous. Um, but if you want to get something out of it yourself, um, for $35 a month, you can come out and train with us as much as you want because we have like fighting gym thought process uh, to where if you want to come out and roll the dice on us, you know, maybe once or twice under a shorter term thing, you know, fucking. It's $250 per two-day class. Or you could pay $35 a month and, you know, just like most other gym memberships, you can come back and continue to get jacked up, you know, as often as you want uh, so that we can, you know, help develop you. And it's a little bit easier on you as well. So, you know, we kind of like that happy medium there. Um, so links for those are in the description below. If you want a hat, fucking we got hats. We sell hats now. Uh, if you want to fuck around on the Facebook page uh, with us, a uh, link for that is in the description below. I'm also on Instagram, so you can check that out under Regular Guy Training. Uh, so, you know, if you want to come find us, come find us. And remember, guys, Regular Guy's firearm is the last defense. Take, be easy. <laughs> Fucked up my tagline. <laughs>